Hey friends, let's say you're working in Svelte and you really need a lot of items. So for example, let's say you have some posts and you want to turn those posts into cards, but you only have a couple of posts on the back end, or even worse, you have some markdown files. So what you're going to do now, you're going to create a hundred fake posts or hundred margin files, right? That becomes really tedious just for some styling purposes, right? Or whatever else you want to do. So let's see how we can create items in Svelte easily. Here, instead of items here, we can say something, for example, array, and then you can specify a number. This is going to create 20 empty arrays. So this is really awesome. But let's look at something a bit more crazy. So if I go here, I can give Svelte an object. I can say length 20, and it also works. And how crazy is this? And we're going to see and learn how this works in a second. But this might also surprise you. If I type here, for example, banana, it's also going to work. Wow, <laughs> what is going on, right? How crazy is this? So for that purpose, we're going to look into the JavaScript output. We don't even have to understand Svelte internals, or we can just look at some code and we can piece together what's going on. So as you can see here, here is some starting point. So we can see here is create each block. This is like Svelte made up syntax, right? So this has to be JavaScript at the end of the day. So here you can see create each block. This is going to already knows this is an li here. So here it has some instructions for Svelte on how to create each of these blocks. You can see it returns a function which is create. So it's going to create the element like regular JavaScript, right? So it's going to put text some inside and it's going to use attributes. Then it's going to mount it where it needs to also for destroying it and etc. But here's something more interesting. So create fragment and basically create fragment is also instructions how to create that element. So it's going to create the DOM tree at the end. As you can see, here is the UL list. So each value banana, right? So let's see what's going on here. Here is each blocks, right? And here is the for loop because at the end of the day, this each loop in Svelte is a for loop in JavaScript, right? So you can see what happens here. It has this string, but it says each value length. Let's just go back to our, actually, I'm not going to even use items. Let's just see something else interesting first. So look at this. If I use items, for example, here, this is really interesting. So what is this each value items that it refers to CTX zero or context. And basically this is just instance variables because we're using let items, you want to change this in the future. So this isn't going to reference to the amount of those values, but to the items itself, because it might change in the future. But for example, let's see how this is going to change if you're just going to say, hey, Svelte, this value can be changed because you're going to use it once. So if you instead say items, you can say one, two, three, four, just specify an array. And now it's not going to use that instance variable, right? It's going to say each value is one, two, three, four. And you can see it already knows how many there are and it's going to loop over them. So it's going to then insert them into this each blocks, which is going to create the DOM at the end. So as you can see each blocks I for each is just going to push them inside. This is a really interesting method to do that because probably performance optimizations or whatever. I'm not an expert in this. As you can see here is some other junk we don't care about. We don't really have to understand it, but just like looking at this code and understanding some basic JavaScript, we can infer what's going on. So again, these are just instructions, what it has to create. So this is the UL element. Now it's going to loop over again, all of those LIs, right? And it's going to create this. And how beautiful is this? And then it's going to create the Svelte component at the end. But let's go back to that object and how interesting that was. So we can say length 20. And now again, as we can see, because each value is now literally this object length 20, guess what it's referring to in the for loop, each value dot length. Yes, yeah, so let's steal this example and let's just put it over here, right? So for each value length, and I'm just going to name it value. And then we can just say const value. And now remember, same as before, we can say 20. And now we can remove this code because we don't need it. But we can just say console log i. And now we can go to the result. And you can see here is going to output zero to 19, same as the example and the generated code from Svelte. So now not only did you learn a cool trick how to create a lot of items in Svelte quickly when you need it, you now have a bigger picture how Svelte actually works and how each is implemented under the hood, which is just JavaScript at the end of the day. Svelte might sound like this intimidating thing because it's like a compiler, but at the end of the day, it's just some instructions that turn this to JavaScript that the browser can understand, right? Alright, so if you like what you've seen, don't forget to like and subscribe. You can find my Patreon in the description and join the Discord. Thank you for watching and catch you in the next one. Peace!